Welcome back to the Mendota Ranch. Um, one little cool thing, you know, we, that we've got here is this caboose that I made into an office. Um, I want to kind of tell you, it's a cool story how we ended up with it. So in 2007, March of 2007, we had a tornado come through the ranch here. And the tornado uh, came kind of from south, was moving south to north. And there's one of those kind of tornadoes that really doesn't touch the ground. It just, it kind of hovers about 20 feet off the ground and goes kind of like a little stirring pot. And as, as soon as it came onto the ranch, um, there was a flow back hand working on a well there and it, it killed him. And then it came across Highway 60. My brother Eddie had just finished his house. I mean, just finished his house and it tore the roof off his house and flooded it pretty good. And there's a lot of rain with this uh, storm too. And then it come into my house between my brother, my brother's house and here is the train. And there's a train that was stopped on the tracks. It rolled, I think it's 60 or 80 cars. I can't remember. It's, it was a bunch of cars. It rolled over. So the train was actually sitting still when it laid all these cars over. And then it came across here, um, took out all my barns, pretty much all my barns, my sprinklers. I had horses running everywhere. It was crazy. I about, and I about drowned. I was over there walking, looking around through one of my barns. And you know, the big concrete pilings that, you know, stuck in the ground uh, to hold the barn down. Well, it pulled it out and it was full of water and it was dark. <laughs> and thank God I didn't fall in that sucker. And I, I thought, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drown in a post hole. But anyways, I was over here messing around getting all my horses put up when the power company showed up and i i went and caught them and they were i'm like hey uh y'all might as well get out of here well i saw them drive out but i never saw them cross the creek so as you drive into the ranch here you got to cross this creek so we got a low water crossing and so i drove down there to check on them and sure enough their bucket truck that's right in the middle of the creek uh stopped waterlogged down and uh so it took us about half an hour and i finally finally got a rope to them and I thought we were going to hook onto their bucket truck and I was going to pull the bucket truck out. Well, these guys start rope, wrapping the rope around their waist. And they, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And so I'm tying off to the, the pickup and they're stepping out into the water. Well, they don't touch the water that much. And I mean, they're gone. They're out of sight. Both guys are gone. And that rope, ding, you know, hits tight. So I jumped my pickup, hit it first and uh, dragged both the guys. I couldn't see them until I got them right up on the road and I drug them both up on the road. I mean, these guys were dead and I got them up there and of course they were, uh, they were okay. And that rope had two fat guys their waist about like that one time they got done. So the funny part was they spent the night here. I rescued them and they spent the night here and the power company gave me $50 for doing all that. So <laughs> it was funny cause I got to tell those guys like, well, you, at least you know you're worth 25 bucks a piece. So, um, so anyways, now we get to the part where the, the train, they, they've got to pick the train up and you know clean it all up. And the way they do it is they just pretty much go in there and just start chopping the cars and the, and the, and the, uh, the van wagons, whatever you want to call them, the semi vans, they just chop them up and haul them off and, and the stuff inside. So, so like say there's lawnmowers, there's all kinds of cool stuff you'd love to have and it's all going to the dump. So they've got trash trucks and they've got a security guy that rides in the trash truck. And so they're sitting there chopping all these lawnmowers, uh, Carhartt jackets, all this really nice stuff. And they're just throwing in there and then they ride to the dump with it. And they even did um, a bunch of guns. So the uh, Texas Rangers had a pallet of 400 something guns and those, those nobody ever found those. They're all gone and I, I don't have them. So, um, but one of the things that really pissed me off was they, um, they, I drove up there one day, I've got a big fishing hole there and it was just strictly catfish. And I had, you know, these, you know, 15 pound catfish in there. And I see these guys dragging my catfish, dead catfish out of the pond and they're hiding them. And so I drive over there and ask them what the hell. And they say, oh, we told, we were told to come over here and dry, hide these fish before you saw them. Well, the Keebler elf fudge cookies that floated down uh, the uh, the road went into that pond and those Keebler elf cookies uh, apparently kill fish. So 
So that pissed me off, so I run them all off, and uh, and so they paid me a bunch of money to come back on the ranch. And one of the things I ended up with when it's all said and done is they left me some big flat cars. So it's these cars that well, like three semi uh, trailers will sit on. And so I was gonna make bridges out of them. Well, the salvage company hit me up, said, well, we'd sure like to buy them. We'll get you a grain car, we'll do this. I'm like, nah. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll trade you those for a caboose. I said, I want a caboose, I want the original trucks, and I want 40 foot of track to put it on. So they said, all right. And so they called me a few days later and they said, hey, we got it. Uh, and here comes the track. So, I, so the semi pulls up here and he's got 40 foot of track on there. And of course it's not put together. And I'm like, I asked that truck driver, I'm like, dude, are you gonna, you gonna put all that together? He goes, hell no, get this shit off my truck. So I unload the damn tracks and the cross ties and the, we go get some spikes. And it literally took me three days to build 40 foot of track. I mean, it's freaking tough dropping them big old stakes in there. So we got that done. And then the way they moved it is was we took one set of trucks out. That's, that's the wheels, the metal wheels. And we rolled a dolly in there with you know, rubber wheels, boomed it down. And we hooked the other side onto a big tow truck just went down the highway. We pulled up here, picked it up, uh, took the dollies out, rolled it back, set it back down on the truck, rolled it on there, set her down, and I welded her up. And uh, it's stable. I mean, it's super stable caboose. It is, um, the wind doesn't blow it around at all. But now the funny thing is we got the train track right there. When the train goes by, it shivers. And so we say it's a ghost. And so then I built this little wooden deal. It's supposed to be kind of like, um, kind of like the train depot, you know, like you're getting on a train depot, but it's pretty cool. So um, I didn't change the paint, any of the paint's the same. We did take some of the, uh, there's some graffiti on there, we took some of it off. Um, other than that, it's pretty much the way we left it, so. So one thing's kind of neat, on the other side is a battery box, and that's where it generated the electricity for um, the caboose. I guess it didn't generate it, it stored electricity, and how it generated it is right here. The wheels turning, turn these pulleys, and they will run up to this alternator. So then this alternator produced electricity that charges the batteries. And, uh, and then that's what they use to run all their, uh, their phones and stuff and electricity in their little, I mean, you know, really the, the caboose was like the very first RV. It's like the, I mean, if you think about it, it had a bathroom, it had a sink, it had water, it had everything you need to do to live. And, it, and the way it made electricity was from the wheels spinning down the tracks. So here's your first RV. I didn't want to touch the paint. I didn't want to touch anything I didn't have to. I want to leave it just, I want it to look like it, it fell off the tracks and landed right here. So pretty much everything in here we've had to replace. You know, the caboose was free, essentially. And it literally, I mean, I don't know the exact number, but I'm telling you, it was bumping 100,000 by the time I got it all gutted and redone. Because everything in here is cut, measure, weld. It's not like you just go buy the cabinets or go buy something for a caboose. Yeah, it was pretty painful. All right, so come on in to the caboose. So, um, Essentially, this is the office. Um, Bonnie and I used it for an office for years. And uh, since then, our son, Luke, has moved in here now. And so Bonnie and I have kind of moved our office to the house. Luke is a, a land appraiser, so he, he goes appraises farms and ranches. And so he stays here, and this is kind of his office. Um, it's super insulated. I use a little Mitsubishi uh, systems. We've got built-in filing cabinets. All these cabinets are all custom built. Um, they, uh, like I said, you know, you just can't go buy cabinets for a caboose. So this is really expensive to get all these things um, just custom built. And and everything in no, there's nothing in the caboose that was really just really square or round or anything. It does have a bathroom in it. Um, so, so the kind of, if you can imagine, I've got, I've got some pictures I'll put up there, show you. There used to be a little desk here 
and then there's little uh i don't know they're, they're not bunk beds but they're little like uh benches that maybe made a bed but this is where up here is where they they rode so these are the original seats that they had now i recovered them of course they didn't have cowhide on them and so it didn't really you these seats spin around it doesn't really matter which way you're going which way the caboose is going you, you can spin them around and look either way and so the ideal is you got one here and one here and you're looking down the side of the train so you can see the side of the train so you can look out and you can see the side the sides of the train now what i use it for is i spin around let me see, let's let me jump to this other side that's this one pointing this way let me see the camera off okay. essentially what i do is i use it because i then i can just sit here and i can look at all my pins i can sit up here and talk on the phone i've got all my pins all my mares right here that we can kind of look around and see so that's why we so that's why i parked it right here um it's a pretty sweet spot just sit up here and kind of visit and talk um whatever you got to do i like it and uh then you got i left this old uh so this would be the air pressure i assume this is like emergency brake or some kind of brake here to shut her down so I, I left all that i thought that looked pretty cool right right there was where they had they had a, this one had a diesel stove and a diesel tank and it, it was a, just a, like a wood burning stove but it's a diesel it's set right here and it goes up chimneys uh right there and uh this is the bathroom yeah so that's not the original toilet the toilet's a little bit different um the uh they did have a big water tank right up here that's what this hole was for so they had their water storage there and um and then the sewer had a little sewer tank in here too and it, of course we took all that out but uh we got septic system made in now but it's a pretty cool deal you know you know when i was a kid we used to ch when these trains go by we used always chunking rocks at them and stuff so I've always been kind of a, attached to a caboose, so I like it. You know, you can make a little bed and breakfast out of one of these things. Like you could put a bathroom right there. If you had a caboose, you could put a, you put a, a little kitchen there that you got your bathroom. You could put a little bed right here. Um, it's pretty neat. This thing weighs uh, 50, 58,000 pounds is what it weighs. And it's, a, it's stout. Of course, we jerked all the insulation out and then we spray foamed everything back. Uh, we, we mounted these little Mitsubishi uh, air conditioner heaters. They work pretty dang good. Um, yeah, I, you know, the biggest expense was these cabinets. Just because you just, just kind of cut and measure and everything in here was super expensive. But I've got a caboose. I don't know how many people got cabooses. I got one. All right, let me know if you got any comments about my caboose. Not my butt, this caboose. And follow me on Instagram. And thanks for subscribing. And give me lots of comments. And then you can do pull-ups right here. <laughs> Did about 100 there. All right, that's it.